I don't know what lies ahead of me, but I know what lies within. A man moving forward from the places he's been. I've experienced violence like it was a tradition. Being raised by my parents, I was conditioned to believe that ruling with an iron hand, I can inherit the land. It left me empty like a sinking sand. Love is the emotional oxygen that gives us life. While the absence of love leads us to a life of strife. So capitulating is actually facilitating the enemy's schemes, making it seem that poor leadership is actually good, but push forward like the little engine that could. We must first understand in order to be understood. Fears we face every single day have so many faces. Enemies in disguise taking us to unhealthy places. It's so easy for us to give up this battle, but no, no. No, we will strap on this saddle and take on this ride until the day that we die. I'm going to take my horse on the old town road. I'm going to ride till I can't no more. Our pain, our struggles, and our adversities. It's part of the process we take to thinking revolutionary. I can see the fear in my mother's eyes as she struggles to raise three kids some leaders care more about commanding and controlling and taking up the highest bid. But what if there was no leadership lid? Could, we could add extra to ordinary, but most importantly, we could lead revolutionary. Completely frozen by fear, just at the age of seven, I found myself hiding under my bed. The cold towel pressed against my skin and my heart was racing. Mom and dad were fighting again. I felt helpless, so I squeezed the pillow to my chest, hoping that it would give me a sense of security. I watched my dad hit my mom. And I somehow tried to find the strength to fight him off of her. But I was too small and too weak to do anything. My father was far from a loving leader. Instead of leading our home through love, he led our home through fear. He would find ways to command and control every situation. He ruled our home like a dictator. Sir, yes, sir. And for a long time, I thought this was completely normal. Truth is, so many children grow up in homes just like I did, where leaders lead through fear and no one has a voice. These behaviors create wounds and voids that carry with us into adulthood. It's something no child should ever have to endure. According to the Invisible Children Organization, four million children in America are abused each year. And I was one of those four million. These fear-based leadership leaves us feeling abandoned, abused, neglected, and rejected. But the examples we set today is what our future children will mimic. But there is plenty of hope for the way we lead our families, our teams, and our communities. Just a couple of months later, my parents were fighting again. This time was different. This time, my life would change forever. Because the very next day, I was boarding a plane with my older brother to go to Haiti. Two babies being sent to a different country to live with people they've never met. I remember my mother crying as we said our goodbyes. At that moment, I felt abandoned by the two people that brought me into this world. I wondered if I would ever see my family again. The first couple of months in Haiti, I felt so lost. 
You know that feeling when you wake up in an unfamiliar place and you start feeling around trying not to bump into the wall? That's what it felt like being in a new country. I grew up speaking English, while the majority of the people in Haiti speak Creole and French. Now, keep in mind, this was like 20 years ago, and Google was barely a company, let alone a translator. So I decided to create my own sign language. Instead of ASL, it was DSL. Seriously, I started to point to things so people could understand me. <sighs> like that one time, grandma was taking too long talking to Sister Wanda after church. I started to point to the exit sign so she knew it was time to go. Six months later, I was back home in Florida. But this time was different. I had just learned that my dad had just left and my mother had filed for divorce and obtained a lifetime protection order against my father, which is almost impossible to get. That's how bad it was. There's a saying, hurt people hurt people. But what if instead the saying was, love people love people? Continue to travel with me. I'm now a teenager, still angry at the idea of a perfect family. My mother knew how important it was for me to have a positive male role model. So she connected me with our youth pastor, Dr. Harrigan. For some of us, there comes a point in our lives where we encounter a leader that shifts our perspective. Harrigan was that leader for me. Now, despite the Fs on my report card, he still believed in me. That, my friends, is called faith, believing in something you haven't seen. The majority of my teachers had this crazy idea that if they instilled fear in me, I would do well academically. But I think they were sniffing those permanent markers a little too long <laughs> because that crazy idea never worked. <laughs> On the contrary, Dr. Harrigan was different. He knew that in order to influence me, he had to become curious about what was important to me. And at that time in my life, looking fresh for the girls at school was more important than the air I breathed. <sighs> we all know that middle school is like a fashion show. And looking fresh for the girls was top priority. Maybe you're thinking I was a little shallow, and if you were, you'd be right. But I think a lot of us were a little shallow at that age. What Harrigan nurtured in me was not my problems, but my potential. In 2016, the Harvard Business Review conducted a study on the trickle-down effect of good and bad leadership in order to determine the impacts of these behaviors. What they discovered was that our leadership style either positively or negatively affects the relationships we have. It affects the relationships we have with our peers, our direct reports, our family, and our friends. But why? Well, as humans, we tend to mimic the examples our leaders set. So it is essential for us to be intentional about our own leadership habits. Harrigan expressed that he cared for me by simply being curious about what was important to me. Like a gardener who plants an acorn, it takes time in the proper environment for that seed to grow into what it was created to be, a strong, beautiful oak tree. But what would happen if we remove that tree from the soil? It would die because the tree is no longer connected to its source of life. What I now know 
is at the source of all great leadership. It's love. And when we are not connected to the source, we die a slow death. Harrigan taught me that loving leaders do not encourage us to spend a great amount of time and energy trying to prove that we measure up. He also taught me that loving leaders create a space of safety and belonging. They don't think less about themselves. They think about themselves less and others more. He created a space, an environment, where I felt empowered to push past my perceived limitations. It was not demanding, but he was understanding. So where could we be as a global community if leaders led from the heart? Could it influence a more social, authentic relationship and connection? And by social connection, I don't mean sending a friend request, liking a comment, or swiping to the right, but instead looking into each other's eyes, being present in our conversations, and bringing our hearts together through an expression of a hug. Truth is, it's difficult to lead through love, because that would mean burying our past in the casket instead of embracing our differences so we no longer have to mask it. As a young boy, I was broken, I was lost, I was insecure. But the love of one leader revolutionized the way I now lead my family, my teams, and my business. Now as a father, a husband, and a leader. I don't always get it right, but my goal is to push forward like the little engine that could. Love is foundational to human development. When we experience love, it changes the way we see things. Instead of seeing adversity as a thorn in our side, we begin to see it as a blessing in disguise. We are created by love, with love, and for love. If we as leaders are to set ourselves apart, we must start by leading through love, which always comes from the heart. Thank you.